Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Sam. Hello. And if you scroll back down maybe a couple of years ago, you'll see actually one of my favourite videos I did um, was with Sam some time ago and created into like a YouTube short because they release shorts and I used your video and it went pretty nuts. So that was good. Yeah, Thanks for that. Pretty cool. It's good. I enjoyed it. Um, so she's back again after some time. Um, we've had a quick chat. <laughs> I was laughing off camera because Sam was like, I want this. It was like she was ordering McDonald's or something. But um, look, I think she, like a lot of my clients, she wants to have something different in her hair, but she wants to wear it long. She wants to have movement and layers, um, but she also doesn't want to have so much going on in her hair that it's hard to do. She goes to the gym a lot. You can see she's got it uh, sort of semi-braided or piggy tails, braids. And uh, if there's lots of variation here, that makes it hard. And then we spoke about just putting some lightning in it to um, make it like not all one length, or sorry, not all one color. Because if we're gonna layer it, we're gonna have variation in the color as well. Then she says to me, but my hair's damaged. And I'm like, so you want me to lighten your hair and it's damaged though. So I guess our challenge as a hairdresser is being able to deliver on our client's expectations and maintaining condition and doing all that stuff. So it'll be fun. I'm excited to do it. She says she's nervous, but I see her on Instagram. She's not nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> you say you're nervous, but you're not. Um, so I'm going to um, start with the colour today. Have you got any questions? No, nah, no questions. None? <laughs> None. All right. Going to get some uh, lightning from out the back, come back, and then we'll start. Easy. Don't run away. I'll try not see you in a minute. <laughs> Let me spin Sam around so you can see the existing colour. Well, not colour, but there is some light pieces in her hair. So you can see there... There is some existing highlights. Um, they're quite fine. It sort of like just gives it this sort of light hue. So I think what I might focus on today is actually creating some definition with the highlights rather than making it look lighter and blonde. Um, we'll use highlighting to actually make sure we put some definition in around the face and in the back. So I'm gonna start in the back or spin around. For those of you who wanna watch me um, color, you can. You can just slow this down. Um, for everyone else, we're gonna speed this up so we can make this video a little less time consuming to watch. Take two. Okay, fours are in. Um, we're going to have something to eat while this is processing. Also, um, the next step is uh, stretching the root uh, and then toning the ends. Um, so when Sam's back here, next I'll tell you all about that and we'll be ready to start cutting your hair. So I'll see you in a bit. Colour is done. Sammy's ready for her haircut. Let me find my weapon of choice. Uh, if you guys are looking for scissors, you can find them on my... 
uh, website. And you can also go to my YouTube store and you can buy yourself a t-shirt. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you did because every little bit of support helps. There's not gonna be a huge amount of hair to cut on the ends. We just wanna really try and create um, fullness and we want it to look quite strong in the ends. So I'm not gonna cut a lot off. Start with the center parting and we're gonna go just under the occipital bone. Again, I don't need to take a heap of sections because I can control the, the amount of hair that I'm taking down in my section. Take a couple of centimeters off, which isn't scary, but it's necessary. See, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Stick to the cutting, mate, as a comedy. Stand-up comic, I make a good hairdresser. Next section, uh, generally around about the crown area. Again, um, I'm being quite lax with my sectioning. A, I've cut Sam's hair a fair few times before, and I know just from looking at the hair in a consultation prior to starting that there's not a um, huge amount of hair I'm taking off and the hair that is coming off on the ends is quite light and wispy. So I don't have any uh, doubts about being able to control the hair. And we just wanna create some fullness by making that baseline as thick as we can. One of the things I tell my clients when they're trying to grow their hair or create fullness in the end, avoiding the hairdresser isn't the way to do it. You need to actually have regular haircuts. Um, no, you don't need to use your own pair of scissors either. Um, you need to make sure that you see a hairdresser that you trust regularly. And so if you're growing your hair, I'd recommend every, uh, say, 10 to 12 weeks to have a haircut. And let's just say your hair grows five centimetres in 12 weeks. I would take off one and a half centimetres to make sure you remove the spit ends and you're three and a half centimetres or just over an inch better off. That's the only way you're going to grow your hair um, successfully and quickly and make sure that you've got like fullness in the ends. Make sure that our sides join in with there. And then the majority of this will all be shaping the back because that's uh, where the focal point is and the front as well. Reshaping around the front. There are some suspect uh, parts on the sides here. Mm. Don't know what's going on here, but some of the, like there's a hole on this side. Looks like, uh, did you have a go at it yourself? A go at what? Like cutting the ends of your hair? Maybe. Yeah. Just on that side, you, you put a bit of a hole on you. That's all good. What do you mean a hole? Well, it means that um, it would be going like this and then it jumps up and then it comes over. Oh. So you've taken a hole out. That's fine. Head to the side for me. No, 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 no. You like this. Yep, perfect. Oof, closet hairdresser. Yeah. How many people out there have a grow cutting their own hair? It's like, she shouldn't do that. Don't you remember I cut my she own She's got a friend as a hairdresser, me, and she <laughs> still does it herself. Don't you remember when I cut my own fringe? Yes, I remember. <laughs> that was the worst decision of my life. <laughs> well, generally, uh, well, there's a reason why um, we train for four years. Actually, I could run a whole, I could run a whole one day workshop on just cutting fringes or bangs. It's actually very difficult. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our short point. We're gonna use a triangle to do that. Well, I might be getting a bit ahead of myself actually. What we'll do first is we're gonna comb the hair back and we're gonna find where the hair generally likes to part naturally itself, which is about there. And then we're going to put our triangle in. We can really see those nice, warm, it's almost like a bronzy um, blonde. But I've left those front pieces, which I think they'll pop nice. So that's what this is also about. So we're going to find those pieces, which are pretty important. Tuck 
this. Maybe it's been around so we can see. You can see that bit there. Bring Sam to the side, head down a little bit, and we're going to project that. And like this, is a little bit of guessing involved. I think that's going to be a good length. Also, got to remember, look how much curl there is in her hair. So I'm keeping in mind that her hair is curly. Now, this is our guideline to shape the sides. I'm going to take a diagonal back section to behind the ear. Bring that forward. Same on the other side. So that we have enough hair on both sides to create the guideline for the rest of the haircut or the rest of the shaping around the front. So you can see we've got our length in here. And we're going to use that as our guide. I'm going to project the hair above 90 degrees. And then I'm going to angle the hair away so that we can see where that is going to fall. And I'm over directing to retain the length. So I don't want to take any off the length. I've already cut the length on the sides. I don't want it to be any so shorter. You can see now the angle that I'm using by looking on the inside. You can see it here it is here. So that comes off. And again, you'll see that side fall out. So I know I'm not cutting the length off. We don't want this to be any shorter than the baseline that we've just cut when we did our guideline, or our baseline rather. And uh, again, if you're working with someone with texture hair like I am with Sam, you do need to take into consideration that when she's wearing her hair uh, smooth, yes, it's going to be longer, but you also got to take into consideration how much it's going to shrink when it's worn curly. So um, that's a conversation you should have with um, your client, especially when they show you a picture like Sam did for me. She showed me a picture of someone with straight hair. So if I cut her hair so that it's going to be, say, around the cheeks and that when it's straight, well, we're going to expect it to jump up around her eyes when it's curly. So I don't want that to happen, so I factored that in when I've chose the, the length of hair that I've laid her around the front. And you saw that when I did that first triangle. Again, over directing all these hair that's coming off is just all really like, very like fine amounts of hair. It's, it's almost like, um, like hairline hair where it's really light, which is good. And you can see that now that's why we get that nice fullness through there. We're gonna get that beautiful. I'm going to keep doing this until we run out of hair. You literally bring all the hair from the back until it no longer reaches into your cutting line. That's how we ensure that we get good flow and synergy with the hair style coming from front all the way through the back. If your client doesn't want any layering in the back, um, this is something to consider because this will, albeit minimal, it will have a little bit of effect on on the back, so it will look slightly laid in the back, but seeing as we're actually gonna be doing a lot of layering in the back for us, it, it won't actually matter too much. I will uh, endeavor to show you, actually I should create a, um, a video showing you how to actually do this technique, ensuring that it doesn't affect the back. Don't answer that. It's what? Declining. Declining. No, I'm going to answer a call while you're cutting my hair. <laughs> I thought you were going to. <laughs> That's looking good. That's looking really good, actually. Ooh. You guys have actually seen me do this particular video. Um, and, well, not this... Sorry, let me rephrase that. You guys have actually seen me doing this particular technique on dry hair. Um, and sometimes I do do it on dry hair, but as you can see, I also do it on wet hair. So I know that some of you asked in the comments previously if I was going to do it on, um, why I do it on dry hair versus wet hair. Well, when I'm working with hair that's curly, um, I do it on wet hair so that when, or well, before styling, I can actually see 
I can actually see just how much it's going to jump up. Sam's trying to look around the camera to see it. She's going to have to wait till the end, because otherwise it'll look a bit odd. Um, round about where the head rounds off, and you've, if you've watched the previous um, videos of mine, you will see me talk about that. So I usually place the comb on the head where the head rounds off is where I consider the back versus the front. Uh, about a half inch wide section. The idea here is to create the most amount of fullness that we can without removing any length at all. So like I did with the front, I made sure that I used the, the ends as a guide. I'm gonna do the same with the back. So I'm gonna spin Sam around. And then what I'm gonna do is project the hair and when the bottom falls down like that, that's where we need to go. Do you guys see that? So the ends fall down. That's how I know that I'm not taking anything off the length. Now, if we want to make the, the interior shorter, of course, we can over direct it like this, which is what I'm going to do. That's looking really good. So you can actually, with over directing the hair or increasing the hair, um, we can create volume and fullness in the root without taking anything off the length. And, and the also, other thing that also does is it, it doesn't uh, remove too much weight out of the ends. Because remember we said that we wanted to create a fuller, more voluptuous look on the ends. Um, so if we were layering it closer to 90 degrees, so if we were layering it down here, obviously there you're gonna take a lot of weight out of the hair by projecting it further away from that classic layering angle and over directing it to retain the length, we can actually create it quite um, short on the top or short enough and then take nothing off the ends without removing too much weight. A little bit of a hairdressing lesson if you are new to this channel and you're new in your hairdressing journey is graduation builds weight and layering removes it. So when we're layering the hair and we want to create shape but to um, keep fullness, we do that by ensuring that we project the hair further away from 90 degrees. That's interesting. Check that out. I'm wondering why my scissor sound. Look at that. That's Gornsky's. That is ready for. See how it goes over? I was wondering why it sounded odd. Bringing everything now back into the center. That's done. We're going to gather all the hair at once. This is a little bit tricky. Normally I do this when the hair is dry as well. As I said previously, the reason why I'm doing it wet in the front and in the back is because the hair is curly and I want to see how the hair is going to react when it's curly. Let me spin you around so you can see I projected it all to the middle. Head back from me, gorgeous. As you can see now, only now do you start to see the highlights that I put underneath the hair. So I actually put quite a lot underneath here see that? Yeah, if I can't. I've actually been shortlisted for a reality television show, which is a hairdressing show. So, watch this space. Actually hosted in in New York. So we'll have to see. Blowout New York, even? No, I won't say what name it is because I don't know if it's on, if it's like been publicly released yet. But I've been shortlisted for it, and I did a video interview a couple of weeks ago. So I'll see what happens. We're going to use Smooth Setter. Smooth Setter makes everything better. Not too much. So just gonna pop this in for the for the ends. I can already see those pieces in the front popping out, Sam. When this is curly, it's gonna be awesome. Well, I think it looked good. I agree. Um, have a look at the start. It is uh, quite a significant change, I think. Just those nice, but we haven't, like again, with the highlight, we haven't gone too hardcore and made it really blonde, but you can see that there's this like bronzy, like light, but it's warm. I haven't gone like, uh, what would you call it? Like ash and those violet platinum, really white whites, because Sam was like, I don't want to look washed out. So she wanted some warming up. Um, so we've done that. I actually really like a base color. I did um, matrix soak. Uh, no, I didn't do soak color, we ended up doing uh, color sync and um, I want it to look like chocolate and I think we've done that 
really warmed up the base. And I think the highlights are complementary. It's more about using the highlights to um, sort of, um, I guess you'd call highlight the shape of the haircut rather than making Sam blonde. So I've done. Sure. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. Yep, Sam said if I cut her hair too short, she'd block me. <laughs> I haven't done that. Not yet. As I said before, you pay me for what I leave behind, <laughs> not for what I cut off. You're not paying me today anyway. You paid me with your presence and your time, and I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, if there's anyone out there who actually wants to volunteer to be a victim on HairTube, send me a DM on Instagram. Um, if you're in Australia on holidays or something like that, that'd be cool too. We'll try and tee it up. Also, if um, you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button if you like this video and share it with someone you think could benefit. And if you want to support me even more, you can go to my YouTube channel store and grab yourself a tea. Um, and I asked a question during this video, so if you answer it in the comments, I'll send you out a gift. I hope Gina got her gift from the last video. And until next time, you want to say see you later? Hang on. See you later. Hang on. <laughs> Sam's going to do the outro. See you later. See you guys. <laughs>